let's get into it. So we're going to look at the different types of transformations, like I said, that we have spoken about. Didn't leave myself any space here, and apparently I'm just going to minimize it. We have spoken about four different types of transformation. So just quickly, the four different types we've spoken about are translations. Now, translations are where we move a shape up, down, left, or right. We have also spoken about reflections. So this is where we create a mirror image of a coordinate or a shape. We've also spoken about rotations. So this is where we turn a shape. We rotate the shape a certain number of degrees in a specific direction to create its sort of turned image. And finally, we've spoken about what we can call dilations or sometimes what we call um, enlargements or it's not how you spell enlargements, <laughs> enlargements or reductions. And this is essentially us making a shape bigger or smaller according to a specific what we call scale factor and we're going to talk about all of these today so don't stress if something's new or you're not 100 percent comfortable but those are the four types of transformations that we have dealt with and we're going to chat about them all Alrighty. so the first type of transformation that we spoke about are translation so this is just sliding a shape up or down or left or right so i'm just going to make that a bit bigger so we can see I'm going to do the first one with you and then I'm going to ask you to do the next one by yourselves. We need to translate this triangle ABC two units up and three units left. So basically what this means, guys, is I need to take every single one of those points, A, B and C. I need to move all of them two units up and then oh, three units left. Now, obviously, as you become more comfortable with this, you might not have to draw in like the bunny hops, but it might be useful to start off with. So if I start with point A, it needs to go two units up and then three units to the left. Three units to the left. And where I end after doing that movement is where the new coordinate is going to be. Now remember, we label these new coordinates with a dash and that it symbolizes that it's undergone its transformation. And so A dash is sitting at negative four, zero negative four because it's negative four on the x-axis zero because i haven't moved up or down i'm stuck on the x-axis so there's no sort of y value other than zero so just remember x first and then y right the same thing is going to happen for b two units up three units left and so b dash is now going to sit at negative two one and finally, C dash, two units up, three units left. And so C dash is sitting at two, negative one. Now, again, I would do all of these bunny hop things in pencil because that means I can then erase them and I've just got the coordinates left and I can draw in with a ruler. I'm just not doing it because it's really hard to try and get straight lines here. Um, with a ruler, we can then draw in our triangle A dash, B dash, C dash. It's just gone from bad to worse. There we go. That's the better. And so what we can see is that from the green triangle, I've performed my translation that I needed to do. Remember, guys, you need to label the coordinates. So on your diagram, you actually need to go and label the A dash, B dash, and C dash. Sometimes they might ask you to write the coordinate in as well, which you can then just write next to each thing. If you're unsure about what it's asking you to do, you can always just write both down. The reason we don't always write both is because sometimes it gets a bit crowded, but that doesn't mean you can't. So if you're unsure, you can always just put both labels and coordinates on and then everything is there. Okay, so take your screenshots if you need. And then I'm going to ask you to try the next one by yourselves. All righty. So question B, another translation. I want to translate quadrilateral four units down and three units right. So I'll give you a second to think about it or do it. And then I'm going to ask for the new coordinates of A dash, B dash, C dash, and D dash.
you got so doing things, doing the things. Well, that my babies. Okay, I can already see some hands, which is awesome. Orange. <clears throat> Okay, Lolita, would you like to give us a dash to start off with? Um, afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Um, for a dash, I got negative three, negative two. Excellent. So a dash is at negative three, negative two. In case we're not 100% sure, a moves four units down and three units right. And so that's why it ends up at negative three, negative two. Perfect. So there's my A dash. I'm just going to draw that in better. And we've got our first point. All right. Title, would you like to give me B dash? Yes, ma'am. Um, B dash is uh, negative three and negative five. Excellent. So B dash is negative three, negative five, which would be over here. Awesome. Well done um tunnel where to can you give me a c dash c c dash is one negative three oh my gosh my brain has just stopped working <laughs> one two three <laughs> minutes down one, two, three units right. Oy vey, so sorry. So C dash is at one negative four. So just remember, we need to go four units down. All right, nice. And then we still have to get D dash. So Luyanda, would you like to give me D dash? Ma'am, D dash is one negative three. Excellent. And so there we find D dash. Now I can draw in all of my sides for my quadrilateral and I can see that I've moved it down and then to the right. <clears throat> all right, guys with hands up, don't you stress, there's gonna be lots more opportunities for you to give me answers. But those are essentially translations. We literally just move up or down, left or right, according to the instructions. <coughs> sorry okay so take your screenshots and then let's have a look at our next transformation which is reflections okay so when we chatted about reflections we needed to have a very important piece of information which is what we call the line of reflection so in grade eight, generally the lines of reflection that we're gonna work with are either the X axis or the Y axis. And in this case, it is the Y axis. So it's telling you to reflect this triangle about the Y axis. So that about basically just means across the Y axis. And so this Y axis acts as my mirror. And so I'm wanting to take this triangle and create its mirror image on the other side. Okay, again, I'm gonna do the first one with you and then I'll ask for the next one. What I need to remember when doing the mirror image is that just like a normal mirror, the image I create must be the same distance away from the line of reflection as the original. So if I start with the original triangle and let's say I start with coordinate A, I can see that coordinate A is five units away from my line of reflection. And so what that means is that the new coordinate A on the other side of my line, so the mirror image must also be five units away from the line of reflection. And so that's how I can establish where the new coordinate A dash must be. And so A dash is going to be at positive five, one. Can someone tell me quickly what the original coordinate of A was? Oh, absolute panic going on here on my side. Uh, Palesa, what was the original coordinate of A? Um, um, it's negative five, one. Perfect, negative five, one. Right, I'm just writing down the originals as we go along because we're gonna have a discussion in a second or two. Thank you, Palesa. Oh, 
Okay, so the next coordinates I'm going to look at is B. I can see that B is two units away from my um, line of reflection. Chaos going on my side, which means that it must be two units away for the mirror image. And so two units away will be here, B dash at two positive one. I do see some hands, so I will get your questions in a second. The original coordinate of B was at negative two, one. Right, and the reason we're writing down the originals is we're hopefully going to start to see a bit of a pattern going on here. And talk with Lucy, before I do C, do you have a question? Oh, uh, no, ma'am, I wanted to answer. Okay, so do you want to give me the new coordinate for C? Yes, ma'am. Tell me. The new, the new one is one and four, ma'am. Excellent. I don't know what color I'm on. No. Right. So C is one unit away. So I need to, oh, she's fighting me today. I need to have C one unit away on the other side. And so C dash is exactly at one, four for my mirror image. If I go back to my original C coordinate and just quickly write that down, the original C was at negative one, four. Obviously, I now need to draw in my triangle. So again, you'll grab your ruler and you'll draw in your triangle. That was much better than some of my previous attempts. And we can see that we've created this mirror image. So Rubeto is hands up. So I'm going to ask the question now. What I want you to do is have a look at the original coordinates and the new coordinates, and we're going to discuss what we see happening. Right, Rubeto, do you have a question? Um, ma'am, hi, ma'am, you know, may you please go back to B? I forgot to take a screenshot. Okay. I'll go back in a second. Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure. Right, Salama, do you want to tell me what you're noticing? Or do you have yes, a question? Okay, tell me. I want to tell you what I noticed. Okay. So, ma'am, I noticed that reflecting from the left hand side to the right hand side from the y axis. Uh, the numbers, the x axis numbers may change from a negative to a positive. Excellent. Well done. Okay, and so the I y stay the same. Y stays the same. Good. So yes, what we see is that exactly as has just been said, if we compare the original coordinates to the new coordinates, I can see that all of the y coordinates stay the same. They're exactly the same as the originals. Where I see a change is in the X coordinates. Okay, so if I go to the X coordinate of the original A, it was negative five. A dash is positive five. The original X coordinate of B was negative two. B dash's X coordinates is positive two. And the same thing happens with C. It was negative one, it becomes positive one. Now this makes sense. All of the X coordinates for the original pink triangle are negative. When it goes over to the other side, it's now going to where all of the X coordinates are positive. So it makes sense that my signs must change. Okay, and this is just sort of like a pattern or a relationship that we start to notice with reflections. It's not super important to remember very strictly right now, we're going to sort of reinforce it more and more as we go along in maths, but it is a pattern that we're going to notice when we reflect along the y axis. Right, so take your screenshots and then I'm going to quickly go back to B so that if you missed the screenshot there, you can take it and then I'm going to ask you to do the next reflection by yourself. Right, here's B, just in case you missed it. Oops, there we go. <clears throat> All righty. So I'd like you to try question D by yourself. So it's saying reflect quadrilateral ABCD about the X axis. So just quickly, so that we're all on the same page, X axis is this horizontal 
line over here. So have a think if and when you're ready, you can raise your hand and I did that. And we can have a look at some answers. Oh, sorry. see some hands my pips yeah we're doing really really well you are doing the thing my pips sam is back guys yes yeah, sorry i just i feel like i'm getting sick again and i'm really not happy about it okay right let us have a look to bang would you like to give me a dash um yes ma'am a dash is negative two to negative three okay which one comes first the negative three or the negative two? Oh, sorry ma'am negative three to negative two excellent well done okay guys remember x first and then y so negative three negative two that's where i'm gonna find so sorry a dash awesome well done um Ponce, would you like to give me a B dash? Um, B dash will be negative two, negative one, ma'am. Excellent. Well done. So B dash is at negative two, negative one. Well done, Ponce. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Palesa, would you like to give us a C dash? Um, ma'am, C is two, negative one. Oops. Two, negative one. Excellent. So there's C dash. Okay. It's a bit of a weird looking dash, but it's all right. Um, oh, guys, we've got so many hands. This is so awesome. Kateko, I hope I said that correctly. Do you want to give me D dash? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Can you say it again? I couldn't quite hear you. Mm -hmm. Oh no, okay, I can't quite hear you. If you wanna put it in the chat for me, that would be awesome. It sounds like you're on the right track, but I can't quite hear. Okay, so it's your Mongo, would you like to give me D dash? I'm trying to locate whoever is mute. Uh, and, Hello, ma'am. But I Hi. think I think D is four and negative four. Excellent. Well done. So four negative four, which is going to be over here. Well done. Thank you. Go. Yeah. All righty. So there we go. We can now draw in our quadrilateral. Again, you're going to use a ruler. Not that weird nonsense that I've just drawn, but we've got our quadrilateral. We can see it's the flipped image, the mirror image. And now we're going to have a quick look at what we notice happening with the coordinates. So if I quickly write down the original coordinates for A, B, C, and D, you guys can already start to notice a pattern if you want. Three was at... A was at negative three, positive two. B was at negative two, positive one. C was at two, positive one. And D was at four, four. Okay, so I already see some hands. Uh, Unati, do you want to tell me something that you're noticing? I noticed that on the left side, the, the A and B, turn into negative so did uh c and d okay perfect which ones turned into negatives uh, both x and y oh okay so guys if we have a look we can definitely see that the y's are becoming negative which i 100 percent agree with and that's for all of my coordinates they all became negatives 
the x's actually all stay the same. So it stayed negative three, negative two, two, and four. And so what happens when we reflect about the x-axis is that all of the y signs change. Now, this again, hopefully makes sense. If I look at where this is, all of my y coordinates above the x-axis are positive. Oh, that's a weird positive. And so it made sense that all of these y's here are positive. When I flip it down to the bottom or underneath the x-axis, this is where all of my y coordinates are negative. And so it makes sense that all of the, these y coordinates are negative. And so this is now another pattern or another sort of relationship that we notice happening when I reflect. So when I reflect about the x-axis, the y coordinate signs are going to change. Again, not super important to stress about right now. It's just quite cool to A, see these relationships and B, have it somewhere in the back of your head because like I say, we're going to build on this more and more in different sections as we go along in maths. Okay, so take your screenshots if you need. Sorry, I keep knocking my table. Salama, do you have a question? Yep. <laughs> All righty. Okay, guys, time for our brain break. If you are new here, a brain break is basically just a little break from the maths we are currently doing. It's generally like a little brain teaser or something like that. So in this case, we are looking at three different types of balls and we're wanting the final values final expressions value rather um but really it's an opportunity for you to get up stretch move if you need to run to the loo you can run to the loo and then we're going to carry on with our math so brain breaks up if and when you want to give me some values you're more than welcome to raise your hand and then we will get a move on and there's always a maths joke so i hope you appreciate it or at least enjoy it Okay, Ayabonga, do you want to give us a value of any of these balls here? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Uh, ma'am, the balls are nine. Excellent. So these rugby ball footballs up here are each nine because we know that nine plus nine plus nine gives me 27. Excellent. So every time I see one, I know that I'm working with a value of nine. Okay, Zalama, do you want to give me another? Oh, no, okay. Uh, Palesa, Modise, do you want to give us another value? Um, Ma'am, I think that it's four. Which one? The ball with the eight. The ball with the eight. Okay, so why are you saying four? Um, Ma'am, because the second one, there's um, two, mm -hmm. four, and three. I think because half of eight is four. Oh, okay, right. So let's double check. I can, I can see where you're thinking. If I say nine times four, what do I get? You get, you get 36. Okay, so what's 36 plus four? It's 40. Okay, what does it need to be equal to? It's in, um, 50. 50. Okay, so let's see. What is 9 times 5? 9 times 5 <laughs> is 45. And what's 45 plus 5? 45 plus 5 is 15. Okay, so do we agree the, the 8 ball must be 5? The balls are 5. So yes, what is the double ball equal to? 10. Excellent. Well done. Okay, guys, so that was quite a tricky one because of that multiplication situation going on there and the addition. So as Pelesa has now told us, each of the magic eight balls are, sorry, Pelesa, I'm just clicking things. Um, each of the magic eight balls are five, which means the double eight balls are 10. So we just need the basketball and then the final one. So Unati, do you want to tell me what the basketballs are worth? Uh, I think the basketballs are 16. 
Okay, can you explain how you got 16 for me? I do agree. I, okay. <laughs> I decided to uh, I write the two eight balls of 10. Mm -hmm. So I decided to see what plus 10 equals 170. So mm -hmm. I minus 10 from 170 and got 160. Then Good. I divided, then I divided uh, 160 with 10. And that's how Excellent. I got my answer. Excellent. Well done. So guys, we can sort of like go back to our equation stuff here and do some inverse operations. But exactly, um, as I nicely said, the um, two basketballs are 16 because 16 times 10, remember we always do multiplication first, 16 times 10 is 160, and then plus 10 gives me 170. So now I know what these two basketballs are worth, which means I just have to find the value of the last one. So Naledi, do you wanna tell us the value of the last expression? The lady. Oh no. Okay. Theo, do you want to maybe tell us the value of the last expression? I'm seeing some great answers on the chat already. Good. So which operation do we do first, Theo? Um, multiplication. Good. So guys, remember multiplication first, 10 times 16 is 160. Then we add the nine and we get 169. Now, lady, don't stress. Theo had us. No problem. Okay. So guys, again, lots of you put it on the chat. Well done. As uh, Theo has just told us, we get 169 when we go and perform our operations accordingly. Ayobonga, do you have a question? Okay. Right, if anyone's not understanding the joke, just that we can all be on the same page. Um, if we think about the number eight, if we put it in exponent form, it's actually two cubed. And so that's why the joke is saying it's two cubed because two cubed is eight. Theo, do you have a question? Okay. Right, hopefully we're all now on the same page. Again, don't stress about these brain breaks, it's just something fun to do um, as we go. I know a lady, like tough crowd. I feel like this is the second time that my joke has not quite landed. I'll find one eventually. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next transformation. Before I do that, Tabang, do you have a question? No, I just wanted to ask about like this thing for the brain break, man. Why do the jokes have to be so cheesy? <laughs> I can't find non-cheesy math jokes. If you can find better ones, I'm all ears. <laughs> I can't do <man. laughs> Okay, guys, so let us go on to our next transformation. So the next transformation we spoke about are rotations. Now there's two important things we need to know um, when we do rotations. First thing is what direction am I moving in? It will either be clockwise or anti-clockwise, unless it's 180 degrees and then it doesn't matter. And secondly, I need to know how far am I rotating my shape? So this question is saying rotate triangle ABC 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So I'm going to do the first one with you and then I'll give you another one to try by yourselves. Obviously, if you're feeling comfortable, by all means, go ahead and then you can double check your answers. The first thing we need to understand is the direction. So if it's saying anti-clockwise, we need to imagine a clock. Clock hands move in a clockwise direction. CW means clockwise. And then anti-clockwise would then mean the opposite direction. And so anti-clockwise or counterclockwise is the opposite direction. 
So in this case, this triangle needs to move anti-clockwise into this quadrant. It's going the opposite way that the clock hands would move. Now we need to figure out the, how far we're rotating. We are rotating 90 degrees. So I'm just moving one quadrant over. Now there's different ways that you can do this. And like I say, I choose to use rectangles because I do find it slightly easier than any other way. Now, when I say I choose to use rectangles, basically what that means is I draw a rectangle from the center of rotation, which in this case is my origin, to each of the vertices. So I'll do it one by one, because obviously I can't draw one rectangle to reach all three vertices. But in drawing this rectangle, what happens is I can now rotate quite easily my point um, 90 degrees. So if I want to take the rectangle and move it 90 degrees, basically what's going to happen is it's going to go from lying flat to standing upright. And so when I now go and do this rotation, I need to keep the dimensions of my rectangle the same. So my rectangle still needs to be two units long and then five units, or rather two units wide and five units long but now it's rotated. So it's moved or turned 90 degrees. And so I've gone from lying flat to a rectangle standing straight up. I can then see where point A has moved because it's gonna stay in the same position on my rectangle. So point A has now moved to A dash at then two negative five. And so through the use of my rectangles, I have turned or rotated the first point by 90 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing with my other points. So now if I go to point B, again, I'm going to draw a rectangle. We'll get there in the end. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to rotate the rectangle. So again, it's lying flat. It now needs to stand upright. It's still going to be one unit wide and two units long, but now it's gonna stand upright and I can then see where the coordinates of B has moved to. So B has now moved to this position at B dash and B dash is then one negative two. Okay guys, there definitely are um, other ways to do this. Um, I'll chat about some other methods that you can use in a second if you're not understanding this, but it is important to be able to visualize these rotations, but we'll get to some other ways in a sec. Just let me finish here. Right, and then the final one is I need to draw my rectangle for C. <clears throat> so if I draw in my rectangle for C, it's gonna be a long skinny rectangle that is one unit wide and five units long. I then obviously need to rotate this rectangle standing upright to one that's lying flat. And so it's still gonna be one unit wide. It's still gonna be five units long, but now it's gonna be a flat or a rectangle line on its side. And so point C has to stay in the same position. So it's going to end up here at C dash, which is positive five, uh, negative one. Okay, now that I've got all of my coordinates, I can draw in my triangle. Again, guys, obviously you will use a ruler, but there is my triangle that has been rotated 90 degrees. Right, so I'll hang 10 for a second if you would like to take a screenshot of this, and then I'll chat very quickly about some other ways that we can deal with these rotations, just in case you need something a little bit different to help you. Um, I see a hand, Leanne, do you have a question for you? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes. Um, ma'am, because you did an example with a um, rectangle, would you always have to start at the origin of zero? Yeah. So in this case, I started at the origin of zero because it told me to rotate it about the origin. So I'll always start at my center of rotation to draw my rectangle. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure. Alrighty, guys, so just quickly, I'm going to write down the original coordinates of A, B, and C. So A was negative 5, negative 2. B was negative 2, negative 1. 
and c whoops see babies c was negative one negative five okay now there is a hmm, my words have lost there is a pattern that does emerge between these coordinates and the new coordinates. So I'll give you a second to have a look if you would like and you can have a try. It is a bit more complicated, so we just need to be careful. But there is sort of like a general rule that we can learn for rotations 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. I don't always like the rules because they can get a bit confusing. Um, but this is another way that you could potentially go and do your rotation. So if we have a look at the original coordinates, I'm just going to move a little bit over so I've got some space here. If we look at the, I'm like a car crashed outside. Um, if we look at the original coordinates to the new coordinates, the first thing that I hopefully see is that this X and Y value switch. So if I go to the, um, a coordinate, I can see that the two that was in the Y position is now in the X position, and the five that was in the X position is now in the Y position. So the first thing that's happening from my original coordinates is that they swap. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing that I'm seeing is that this was originally negative two, but now it's a positive two. If I go to point B, the Y was originally negative one. When I swap it, it now becomes positive one. And so what is actually happening is that the sign of the Y is changing. Now to do that, we use a negative. We indicate that with a negative sign. Basically what that means is that the sign changes. If we have a look, if it was originally negative two and I times that by a negative one, we know a negative times a negative is a positive. So it ends up being that positive two that we get in the new coordinate A. And so we can learn this rule for rotations 90 degrees, uh, what was it, counterclockwise about the origin. That is a rule that will apply anytime we do this specific rotation. So basically what will happen is you will swap the coordinates and then you will change the sign of Y. Now, again, like this is one you can learn and that's cool, but I do sometimes find it a bit confusing um, because it isn't just an extra rule that you have to learn. With that being said, it is another way that you can do a rotation. So if you're happier to learn rules, then that's cool. Just so you can see that it does work. If we look at coordinate C, and this is getting a bit chaotic, but it's fine. If we take the coordinates of C and we swap them, it becomes negative five, negative one. So this is now the Y and the X. And then according to this rule, I need to change the sign of Y. So it was negative, it now must become positive five, negative one. And what I see is that that is exactly the same coordinate as C dash that I got using my rectangles. So you can apply the rule in order to, um, do these rotations. There is a third way to do rotations. The, I like this even less because it relies on a lot of like measurements and accuracy. Um, just so that you can see, I'm going to do it with one point, but like I said, I, I don't find it the most accurate form. If you draw a line from your center of rotation to a vertex, you can then put your protractor on this line, measure 90 degrees, and then draw a line of equal length and where it then ends is where you would plot your point. The reason I don't particularly like this method is because you have to get the lines equal in length. Um, again, this is kind of using the rectangles because what you can see is that this red line that I've drawn cuts through two blocks. So there's my blue rectangle. And so the line on the other side also cuts through two blocks, which is my blue rectangle. So it's very similar to the rectangle thing the rectangles basically mean you don't have to use a protractor, um, but you can also use a protractor if you want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So for those of you asking of the different ways, this is quite confusing with the rectangles. There are definitely different ways to do it. I think the rectangles are the easiest, but just because I think that doesn't mean you have to think that. So there are two other ways that you can um, do rotations if you 
if you want to. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off that red scribble. <clears throat> and um, you can take a screenshot if you need to take a screenshot. And then I'm going to ask you to try the next one by yourselves. And hopefully you can now practice one of the methods that you might find more useful to you in the next one. Okay, and guys, that's like sort of the beauty about maths. Just because I think this is the easiest method doesn't mean you think it's the easiest method. And there's often many ways to do something that's perfectly correct. And that's what my, why maths is so cool. It's because we can do things in different ways and all of them are correct. We just have to find the one that works for us. Okay. Right, so question F, still a rotation. But it's now a rotation, um, I've also said quadrilateral, sorry, I meant to change this. So we want to rotate triangle ABC 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So when we do a rotation clockwise, remember it was move in the um, direction a clock hand would move. So we're now moving over into the other quadrant. So I'll give you a second or two just to give it a try, especially if you would like to give one of the newer methods or a different method a try. Obviously now this is 90 degrees clockwise. So the rule we spoke about isn't gonna work because that rule is only for 90 degrees anti-clockwise. But there is a rule for this, which I'll give you in a second if you would like to write it down. But have a go of this and then we'll have a look at some answers. Someone isn't on mute. Not too sure who. Uh, I'm trying to search for them. Mm. Uh, guys just remember once you've answered a question or you've raised your hand or whatever just remember to put yourself on mute right if and when you're ready to give some coordinates you're more than welcome to what i am just going to do while you're busy having a look is i'm just going to write down the original coordinates so that we can have a discussion in a second Okay, do you already see some hands? I'm just going to give everyone another second or two because I know that I'm asking you to try something that is quite tricky. What I'm just doing here is I'm drawing in the rectangles in case that's useful to you. If it's not, you can just ignore them. Because again, I know it's quite hard to try and do this when you don't have the piece of paper with the diagram on in front of you. Oops, sorry, everyone. Okay, Palissa Mordice, do you want to give us the new coordinates of A dash? Yes, ma'am. Um, A dash is one, two. Perfect. Okay, so guys, just that we're all clear on why that is the case. If we think about this yellow rectangle over here, which I'm just going to scribble in because the other rectangles have now covered it. 
it now needs to rotate to stand upright. So it's now going to stand over here. A was at this vertex over here, which means that the coordinate of A dash is going to sit in the same position. So A dash is at one, two. Excellent. Alrighty. Absolute amount of panic here on my side. If we go and have a look then at B dash. Tabang, do you want to give me B, da B dash? Um, um, B dash is three, two. Excellent. So B dash is three, two. Again, if I just draw in my rectangle so you can see, it's now going to lie on its side. Coordinate B must be in the same position. So B dash is exactly at three, two. Righto. Last one we need to do is then C dash. Chaos of colors. Um, Spiwe, do you want to tell me C dash? Yes, ma'am. I think C dash is six, five. Okay, so C dash is originally, oh, sorry, my words. If I look at the blue rectangle over here, that's the rectangle going to C. So it's lying flat, which means that when I bring it upright and I didn't leave myself enough space, it now needs to go to one seven. And so C dash needs to be at one seven. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So guys, just remember the numbers should all sort of kind of look the same as what the original was it just might be a different order so c dash is at one positive seven right from that point i can obviously now draw in my triangle so again you will you will use a ruler join your points oh that's a horrible triangle but it's all right and we get the rotated shape so if we need i'll take the rectangles off in a second but you've got the original coordinates written down. You've got the new coordinates. Um, we'll have a chat in a second. So sorry, as I wrote down in yellow, I realized that was a very poor choice. I will fix the yellow now. Um, so here's A dash and A dash is at one, two. Sorry, Palesa. Okay, so again, have a look at your original coordinates that I've written in red and have a look at the new coordinates. See if you can notice any sort of pattern because there is a rule that we can apply for rotations 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, um, which I will write down if that is something that you would like to have for yourself, but it's not something you need to stress too much about. So Bang, are you noticing anything? Um, yes, ma'am. I think like the pattern is basically switching the X and Y coordinates and making them a positive number. Okay, good. So what we're seeing happening here is the fact that again, whoopsie, sorry, the X and Y are switching. I can see that because if I switch those two, I get one negative two, which is looking similar to A dash, except for the fact that the two is negative. And so I also need to change the sign. So what happens is from my original coordinates, I'm going to, sorry, maybe I shouldn't do that. From my original coordinates, I'm going to swap the order. And then I can see that it is the X coordinate sign that I have to change. So I put a negative there and that means that I'm changing the sign. And I can see that this applies because if I now go to, let's use point C, if I go to point C, um, I haven't left myself enough space. If I swap these coordinates, I get one negative seven. And if I now change the sign of the second coordinate, I get one positive seven, which is what the coordinates of C dash are. So that is a rule that we can apply when doing rotations 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So again, another way that you can go and do these rotations if you want.